1. Despite its short life, SpaceX has already reached multiple historic milestones, and its latest achievement is no different. On the 31st of May 2020, SpaceX became the first private company to send humans to orbit and into the International Space Station. This was also the first crewed flight to reach space from American soil since the end of the Space Shuttle program in 2011. It was a major step for both the commercial space industry and SpaceX itself, whose ambitions go far beyond sending people into orbit. But there's one defining moment of arguably greater importance for the company, and it happened five years prior to its 2020 success. But first, let me give you some context. SpaceX was founded in 2002 by Elon Musk, also known for his other companies and his Twitter account. As Elon said, the long-term long goal of SpaceX, SpaceX is um, perhaps not a very commercial sounding goal at all, which is it's to make life multiplanetary. Um, and they plan to do so by drastically reducing the cost of spaceflight by utilizing a reusable launch system. At first sight, this doesn't look like such a groundbreaking thought. After all, the space shuttle was a reusable space vehicle that NASA used for decades. But that isn't the whole picture. You see, the space shuttle, although reusable, relied on external propulsion to get into space. Two solid rocket boosters and an external tank, to be precise. And while the rocket boosters were refurbished and reused after landing in the ocean, the external tank was single-use. In addition to that, the shuttle itself, although reusable, would require significant refurbishment after each launch, due to the complexity of the vehicle, as well as the significant wear and tear it was exposed to during the mission. This maintenance work was not only costly, but also time-consuming, and prevented the shuttle from making more frequent trips, which in turn was making it less cost-effective. As a result, getting into space was expensive, with each shuttle mission costing between $450 million and $1.5 billion. Unsurprisingly, long before it was announced, the shuttle program was widely perceived as inefficient and on its way to be retired. To avoid the mistakes made by NASA, SpaceX had to design a simplified vehicle with quick turnaround time. One of the more radical ideas the company had was to develop rocket boosters that would be able to land themselves vertically on solid ground, ideally in close proximity to their next launch location. In theory, this made sense. Vertical rocket-powered landing was more reliable than parachutes and only added fuel to the design, with no extra hardware mass. Nevertheless, the design represented a significant technical challenge, with the future of SpaceX being put on the line. After multiple tests, in September 2014, SpaceX made their first attempt to vertically land the first stage of a Falcon 9 rocket. Another attempt was made in January 2015, followed by a third in April 2015. And to add to the pressure, Blue Origin, a rival space transportation company founded by Jeff Bezos, performed a successful vertical landing in November 2015. Despite that, on December 22, 2015, SpaceX made history by becoming the first company to successfully return and vertically land the first stage of an orbital rocket. Not only did it look like science fiction come to life, but it also proved the feasibility of the reusable system that SpaceX had been developing for so long. The success of that system, which SpaceX developed at a tenth of what NASA would have spent, has so far helped reduce the cost of space transportation from an average of $18,500 per kilogram during the shuttle years to $1,400 per kilogram in 2018. Given its success, it has also become the foundation for a far larger rocket. But that is a topic for another video. Thank you.